Over the years, I have produced some 16,000 different posts. I've been doing this for a while. The posts aren't long, they're short, but they're informative and especially they refer to specific content, specific objects that have been created by people around the world. Now what does 16,000 posts look like? links, there's topics, there's publications, there's feeds, comments, social networks, but most of all, my observation over the years is that what we see is chaos. And I mean that literally, literally chaos. Now I want to draw a distinction here. Because we think of the internet, we think of advanced studies, we think of things that are complicated, that are difficult to understand, that are made up of many parts. But if we could just understand the parts, then we would understand the whole. But chaos is something more. Things that are complex is something more. In a thing that is complex, it is not simply made up of many parts, it is made up of many parts that interact with each other. The difference between complexity or something being complex and something being complicated and how that feeds into your ideas, particularly from the social side of things. Could you talk about that just a little bit? Sure. Order emerges when organisms interact with each other to create new properties by bringing themselves into association. This connection <coughs> proves to be critically important. Because the connection means we cannot simply understand the whole by understanding the parts. Well, probably the easiest way to look at it, uh, at least the way I've described it, is you know a, a complex or let's start of complicated. A complicated task is one where everything has a piece. So if you're taking your car apart to fix something in the engine, and uh, when you're done, and if you've got a bunch of bolts and parts left over, something went wrong. But that's a complicated task. It's like a puzzle. Every piece has a place. Something that's complex in contrast is uh, more uh, iterative and more difficult to predict. So that means that. Best example probably is the weather because we all experience it. So, you know, we listen to the news and it says, oh, tomorrow it's going to be sunny and we're going to have a picnic and, you know, whatever. And then all of a sudden it comes along and it's raining and it's miserable and, and it's like, well, you know, how can they be this wrong about um, this? Well, I want to present to you a summary um, of how the economy is uh, out of control, the, the chaos that characterizes uh, capitalism. So it's going to be a summary of what we've done um, over the last few lectures. So let me put this on the board and then explain as I go along what we have here. We have the rate of profit. There is this thesis. You've probably heard of this thesis. If a butterfly flaps its wings in South America, it will create a thunderstorm in Central Park in New York City. And the idea here is that a very small change in initial conditions in a chaotic system like the weather can produce very large results. But that's because complex systems, peace are going to connect and interact in ways that we can't always anticipate. And because of this connection and interaction that happens at that, uh, at that systemic level, uh, we can list the elements that are at play, but we can't necessarily predict the outcome. Now you might think we are trying to understand a chaotic system that we would just go out and get that butterfly. But you can't get at the butterfly. You can't find the butterfly. Even if you had the butterfly in your hand, you are not capable of knowing, of discovering what the result will be. Problem. It, both, it suffers from the depression and it suffers from the euphoria, the expansion. They're present in the same body of the economy. The main point here that I'm trying to draw out is that you cannot predict. When you get mu multiple mutually dependent variables, you create a chaotic system. And in a chaotic system, there is not a body of knowledge that you can assimilate or understand. The organism is a system of intercommunication of extreme complexity. Try to define what you are. When you go into it, you suddenly realize that when you take off your skin and look underneath, you're a complex system of tubes and fibers beautifully patterned. And when you look at this under a microscope, 
All these crazy little creatures running around inside of us don't look like people, but they would seem like people if you got used to them, or if you got to know them. Because inside of us, they're having all their problems, they've got all sorts of fights going on, collaborations, conspiracies, and so on. But if they weren't doing that, we wouldn't be healthy. If the various corpuscles and cells in our bloodstream weren't fighting each other, we would drop dead. And that's why battles at one level of being can bring overall peace and health at another level. People are always going to have problems, people are always going to bump heads regardless of what type of system we live under. But it's up to us to understand this and to turn these bumps into the learning process. This thinking that informed our design of the connectivism course, instead of trying to amass a set of facts or a set of principles, instead of trying to create a curriculum or a body of knowledge, what we were more focused on was the engagement uh, by the members of the course with the material. The idea here is not to produce some set of learning, not to focus on the content, not to focus on the pedagogy, but to focus on the learning. So this is a, 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 a summary of what we have of, of this, uh, of this uh, business cycle. And if I may just put, the, I'm going to erase this now. And if I may just put the whole thing together in, in one equation, if I may, to just to capture this, 